Okay, I'm going to come in here with my, you can see where I got a little bit of aluminum actually on my pineapple right there at the top. So let's come in, I'm going to come at this angle. I'm not applying a lot of pressure, only when I first dig into it, I'm actually letting the cutter float and just bounce because you don't want too much power in it because you can goof up a seat. Now notice how I'm going right back into the aluminum. Now what that does, by letting it dig on into the aluminum past the edge, it raises up the aluminum right there. All right, it brings it up about 20 or 30 thousandths, which ain't much, but it's enough to compensate from where they dug too deep in the bowl and left this big giant radius right here. So now I've, I've got it cut right to that line, and I'm going to be able to lightly touch it with an aluminum cutter, and it's going to pull it in, and there is not going to be any transition difference, hopefully, where there's not supposed to be one. All right, so anyway, I just wanted to give you a, a close-up on that. I'm almost through with all of them, so I'm going to complete that, and then we'll do the final part of it, which is the little bit of minute bow blending to see what kind of a transition it we got. It's all about transition. The change from the aluminum to the cast iron seat, and as it's doing that, making a turn going around the valve into the bore. I mean, you want as little resistance and as smooth of a transition as you can, because remember the one thing I've said over and over, air does not like change. Well, it's got enough problem turning, making a 90 degree, coming around and going into the bore without some crap iron seat that's overhung into the aluminum and then some idiot going in there, grinding on the aluminum, making the matter even worse. All right. All of the seat material and rolling it into the aluminum, therefore digging into the aluminum, is complete on intake and exhaust. But now, um, this is where we go in there and pull that in. Now, now keep in mind, look how small of an aluminum burr that I'm using. Uh, that's a custom diameter size. It's, it's pretty small, actually. It's where I've sharpened it a bunch and it pulls it down inside each time you sharpen. I've got a bunch of them I had deliberately done that way. But now, what has to be done ever so easy is lightly touching it and pulling it in because the whole purpose of cutting that seat out was to make it where it dug inward to the aluminum, therefore making a transition. So I'm not gonna touch any of this iron seat at all. So briefly, I'm just going to show you exactly what I do here on this. I'm just, like I said, I'm just skimming it. I'm 
doing the best I can to stay away from that iron seat, I tell you. Sometimes it's not easy to do, but I'm doing the best I can with it. That's it, I'm gonna stop at that. Now, for the most part, I'm pretty much done on this case right here. What I'm gonna do just to prove my point is I'm gonna go back in here when I'm done with the bowls and just from the edge of the seat, oh, about an inch down, I'm just gonna lightly touch it with one of my stones just to show you where I'm going for, but uh, let's give it the old hook test here and see what we got. Um, if I can find the damn thing, here it is. Okay, now, look how I start at the bottom. Look at that. That, my friend, is what we want. If you closed your eyes and took your finger and ran straight up, you cannot tell where the aluminum stops and the iron begins. That is what you're wanting, that perfect, smooth transition for it to make its turn and just come on out of there, all right? I mean, I'd love to go in here and, and do some concentrated bow work, pull it backwards, do all that, but see, we're at the end. This is actually almost coming past a stage 2.5 because of all the problems that was done, but basically all we're doing was correcting that and doing the guides and valve job, and that's pretty much it. Uh, so anyway, uh, I just showed you what I touched. There's the hook. Look at that. No resistance at all. I mean, it's just smooth as it could be before it would have stopped it dead in its track. So I'm going to go ahead and complete this and then go back in there and touch it with a stone a little bit. And then we're going to put the run out dial on and check the results of my valve job to see if I bettered that any and tried to get it something better than what it was. I mean, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that I got a 1.0 or below on it because, man, them things were out pretty bad, but I'll guarantee you what I did helped it a whole hell of a lot. All right. That little bitty bit of, uh, just to have it, a little bit of insurance. I go in here with the stone. This is a mounted point. Now, I'll spend the time on the seat. I don't go into the aluminum hardly at all. Just to cross over a little bit. Mostly I spin it, like I said, on the seat, then I'll just barely nudge into it. That takes any little waves or humpity crumpities right out of it there. Uh, Then the old finger test. All right. So I just wanted to go over the mounted stone. I'm going to give you one shot at it here in just a minute when I uh, run the run out test on it and everything. Let you take a look at the final thing. This is about it.